Hello, my name is Jody Kreiner. I am currently a junior at the University of Arizona studying chemical engineering with minors in optical engineering, math, and astronomy. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about persistence of vision, um, what it is, and where you can see it in everyday life. So first things first, what is persistence of vision? Persistence of vision is the optical illusion that occurs when visual perception of an object doesn't stop even after the light rays preceding that object have ceased to enter the eye. So basically it's when a single or single points um, moving quick enough turn into a larger image or a fluid picture. The history of persistence of vision can be traced all the way back to Aristotle from the late to early 300 BC era, where he noted that when he was looking up at the sun, even after he looked away, the image of the sun remained in his vision. This is a really great example because we see this every day. When you're looking up at the sky, if it's a little bit too close to the sun, even after you're looking away, that sun has saturated your vision. And so you see what is commonly referred to as sunspots. Moving forward, the next notable example would have been in 165 CE, where Ptolemy in his book Optics um, noted the visual discrepancies of fast spinning wheels. So this would have been something maybe on a wagon, where when moving fast enough, the spokes of those wheels seem to blur together to form a solid image of a solid wheel. And so that's a really great example that we can see today too on cars. If you're looking at a car um, going relatively quickly, you know, highway speed, you can't see the actual spokes on the rim of the wheel. You see one solid image. And so this is a really great example, again, of persistence of vision that is still relevant today. And even though there were a few more notable examples um, moving forward to one of the most recognizable instances of persistence of vision was when Isaac Newton um, demonstrated using persistence of vision that white light was actually a combination of all different colors. So the way that he did this was to draw a color wheel similar to this one um, and spin it really quickly. And when that happened, he noticed that all of those colors blurred together to form white. And that was his proof that white light was actually the combination of all colors um, as opposed to black, which was previously thought before. Lastly, we have one of the most important documentations of persistence of vision to date, where in the 1700s, Patrick Darcy actually used the rotation of a burning coal to quantify the delay in our vision, essentially allowing us to put a number to that persistence of vision, which is something that we'll talk about um, a little bit later. But that was a really important discovery because it opened up a whole new set of questions regarding what persistence of vision was and how it occurred. Um, it's also important to note that persistence of vision can be referred to by a few other names, um, including retinal persistence, persistence of impression, and flicker fusion. And so um, we'll talk about each of those a little bit, and um, obviously some of them are a little bit self-explanatory, but you'll figure out mainly the flicker fusion one, um, why those are also common names for persistence of vision. So now that we have the history out of the way, we're going to talk a little bit about common examples of persistence of vision and um, where you may have actually seen it that you might have not noticed was persistence of vision examples. So the first, I'll throw up a few examples right here, are a persistence of vision clock, which is actually the quick rotation of light or fiber optics that produces an entire image, in this case, the time. Um, so it's a really cool, fun, swanky clock that's not super expensive. You can order one off of Amazon. They're really fun. Um, another example, like we talked about before, would be Newton's wheel. Um, so this is a great example that has two scientific backgrounds, um, one for persistence of vision and the other for the um, proof of white light containing all different colors. Um, and then another great example would be a flip book. So something just like this, um, I'm sure we've all probably made them as kids. Uh, they're really easy to make, but they're really fun. Um, flipping through images really quickly provides essentially one seamless video, um, which is a great, really rudimentary example of persistence of vision. So now that we have a lot of the basics out of the way, I would like to raise a question to you guys that you can think about by yourself, talk about with a friend, leave in the comments below. Um, but what do you think causes persistence of vision? Is it a mental or retinal phenomena? So what's meant by that is, does persistence of vision occur because it takes our mind time to compute what our eyes are seeing? Or is it because an image is actually burned onto our retina? So I'll give you guys a few seconds to think about that. It's a little bit of a critical thinking activity, and then we'll walk through some of the rationale behind it.
So to answer this question, two main factors really have to be considered. The first is called fee phenomena. This occurs when apparent motion is observed because of two nearby optical stimuli being presented in alteration with relatively high frequency. So we'll throw an example up, um, and this is mainly a brain-based illusion. And so that's what we were talking about before, how it's taking our brain time to compute what our eyes are seeing. You can see that in this example, the dot looks like it's moving around the circle really quickly. In reality, just one of those blue dots is being turned white, creating the illusion of movement. The other factor that we have to consider is called beta of movement. This is when viewing a rapidly changing series of static images produces a smooth flowing scene. So I'll throw another example up. Um, that occurs at a lot lower frequencies than phi phenomena. So as you can see, we'll compare the two right here. Um, one is brain-based, the fee phenomena, and the beta movement is mainly eye-based. And so that's what we were talking about before that specifically has to deal with our optic nerve. Um, that is more staining of the images on the eye as opposed to taking, having our brain take time to compute what we are seeing. So how do we answer our initial question of how persistence of vision works? Is it a brain thing or is it an eye thing? Technically, both are correct. The processing of persistence of vision illusions is specific to the type of illusion being presented. So you can see in the examples before that one was very fast moving, one was very slow moving. Um, often in film, both phi and beta movement will be used to create more seamless visuals. So it really helps when you can play off of each of those different types of illusion methods. So basically, there's no conclusive evidence to prove that it is just a brain thing or just an eye thing that's responsible for this illusion. Um, basically, the main consensus is that both play a role in creating that really nice flowing image. So if that's what you thought or that's what you guessed, give yourself a pat on the back. You have a really great handle on persistence of vision. So now that we have a pretty decent handle on persistence of vision, um, we're gonna go through another video that has some great examples and is able to show you visually um, some of the different things that persistence of vision is known for. Some of these examples you may be familiar with, um, but if you're not interested, feel free to skip through this part. Newton's color disc. A Newton disc is a disc with segments in rainbow colors. When the disc is rotated, the colors blur together and the eye, unable to respond rapidly enough, sees the colors mixed together to form white. Even if the disc consists of seven colors, it appears white. This is due to the phenomenon called persistence of vision. When a person sees an object, its image remains in the retina of the eye for time interval of 1 by 16 seconds. This phenomena is called as persistence of vision of eye. If more than one object is seen in 1 16th second, the feeling of a resultant visual effect of all of them remains in the eye. So now the fun part. How do you practice persistence of vision at home? Um, one of the really fun examples that you see a lot, especially around 4th of July, is called a sparkler's trail. And so um, this is really simple to do. All you need is a camera with a long exposure time and a sparkler to be able to write things in light in the sky. And so, um, as you can see by these examples, it's really simple to be able to create some nice, fun little um, images of a sparkler trail um, by simply using a long exposure time. And so moving that sparkler quick enough will um, make it appear as though that burning spark is a trail as opposed to just a single point. So another really cool example is called a thomatrope. And so that's when you draw a picture on two sides of a card, um, and then you can either tie a string around it or tie a rubber band to either side and spin the card really quickly. Um, another easy way to do this is to um, tape it to a dowel and you can spin it in between your hands and it forms what looks like one cohesive image. Um, and then another really simple example, I'm sure we've all done this, like I said before, is a little flip book. So here I just have a ball drawn on some of these um, stickies. And so when you flip through it really quickly, it looks like the ball is moving. 
um, sticky note is really easy way to do that. There's some really cool ones you could get creative with it, make some people look like they're walking, spinning an umbrella. There's a lot of fun stuff that you can do with flip books, which are um, really simple examples of persistence of vision. And lastly, um, I'm sure you've all heard of the liquid or rubber pencil trick. And so that's when you take a um, just basic number two pencil in between your fingers and wiggle it quickly and it looks like it's appeared to be rubber or moving. And so um, this does take some practice. I'm not very good at it, um, hence why I'm not trying it right now. But I know some of my friends that are able to do it so easily. So that's a really quick example too of persistence of vision. Um, the moving of that pencil stays in your um stays in your retina and in your brain, uh, making it look like it is fluid or moving. And so those are some really easy at home examples that you can try. Um, if you do, make sure to film it and comment, leave a link below. I would love to watch you guys try your examples of persistence of vision. Um, and it was great to be able to discuss this with you. I hope this, um, you were able to learn a thing or two and maybe this got you interested in um, optics or STEM field too, because uh, there's a lot of really fun stuff that's involved in um, STEM and optics in particular. And so Hopefully this got you thinking a little bit and um, thanks for watching.